Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this new discovery and a new study that might help us resolve one of the older mysteries in regards to the formation of extremely massive black holes inside the objects known as quasars across the early universe. With the mystery here being pretty simple, how exactly did certain black holes become so extremely massive so early in the universe? Did they actually absorb a lot of mass? Did they collide with other black holes? Did something else entirely happen? Or maybe they existed from the beginning of the universe itself as the so-called primordial black holes? With some of these black holes becoming such giants that they would actually dwarf the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And that's only after a few hundreds of millions of years of existence when the universe was still in its infancy. So how exactly did they do it? Well, so this recent study is actually based on some of the older observations from the Hubble telescope and it was able to find a very important missing link, a link regarding the objects we usually refer to as quasars. The objects that represent an extremely active galactic nucleus where the black hole is absorbing a lot of mass, spewing out a lot of energy, and as a result is producing extremely bright astrophysical jets visible from billions and billions of light years away from us. And in terms of quasar discoveries, there actually have been more and more mysteries in the last few years. One of the bigger mysteries is, once again, in regards to discovering these quasars at extremely faraway distances. Just last year, the scientists found one at the time when the universe was only approximately 780 million years. And because we believe the galaxies only started forming around 400 million years after the beginning of the universe, it means that after approximately 380 million years, this was already an extremely powerful and super super massive object. Something that a lot of modern formation theories, usually using supercomputers, have actually a bit of a trouble explaining. How exactly did such an object form? And in terms of the actual distances from us, well, here we can use one of the online calculators, and I personally really like using this one by Ned Wright from UCLA to determine the distances to this object. That paper from last year determined that the redshift here was 6.82. So by plugging in this number right here, we can actually determine the distance to be approximately 28.5 billion light years from planet Earth. And that's of course relatively far one of the farthest objects we've ever discovered, but naturally not the farthest, as a matter of fact, very recently we've talked about the most distant galaxy found so far. You can check that video out somewhere right there or in the description. But despite the excitement of discovering such an unusual object so far away, it actually created more mysteries and more problems for a lot of cosmologists. Mostly in terms of the ideas behind the formation of early galaxies and specifically the growth of black holes. When trying to calculate how such a massive black hole could form so early on, none of the modern theories could explain this very easily. And most of the modern theories usually revolved around the formation of starburst galaxies. Essentially, extremely active galaxies where a lot of different stars form at the same time and through the formation of stars and interaction of matter, they would often create very dense central regions where the massive black hole would then start absorbing a lot of mass and growing quite dramatically, quite fast. And so by absorbing huge amounts of mass very quickly, that's really the only way, or one of the few ways, the scientists could maybe explain the existence of these early quasars, with other ways being a little bit less conventional, usually breaking the laws of physics or our current understanding of the universe. For example, maybe the universe is much, much, much older than we actually think. Or maybe these black holes existed even before the existence of the current universe. None of this has any proof though, so we can't really speculate that far. What we can do, however, is look for other examples of other galaxies that might be sort of an intermediary link. For example, by looking around at a lot of other galaxies, in theory it's possible to find various steps of evolution of a typical quasar. So maybe from being not a quasar, just a very massive starburst galaxy, to then becoming some kind of a dusty cloud where a lot of mass is being absorbed really quickly, to then finally becoming this extremely bright object with pretty much no gas around it that's visible from extremely far away distances and shoots out these very powerful astrophysical jets for possibly millions or even billions of years. 
And to be a little bit more exact, here the scientists expect this to be a kind of a three-step process. The first step is the formation of starburst galaxies. This is an example from one of the older studies of the discovery of one of the farthest galaxies ever found, GNZ11, located at a redshift of 11, which corresponds to about 32.1 billion light years away from us. And there's actually quite a handful of these discoveries from the early universe of these very, very ancient starburst galaxies. Normally they're not very difficult to see because they produce a huge amount of ultraviolet light corresponding to the formation of actual stars. And one of the more well-known examples from the nearby galaxies are the antenna galaxies you see right here. This is an image taken by Hubble a few years ago. And then something happens to these starburst galaxies making a lot of them form into quasars, which essentially shut down the star production for a pretty long time, usually until some other catastrophic event, such as a collision with another galaxy. Naturally, quite a lot of quasars have been also discovered in the last few years, mostly because they're so extremely easy to see because of the bright jets. And so a lot of modern theories predict that some kind of a supermassive black hole usually forms behind all of this dust and ends up being the center of the galaxy itself. But up until this point, there has never really been a link between this and this. In other words, the scientists didn't really understand how one transforms into another. Or actually, that's not entirely true. The understanding mostly came from simulations like this one, from the Illustrious project, but not really actual observations. And that's of course, once again, until now. We finally have the first ever missing link. A galaxy that seems to be in the process of forming a really, really massive black hole in the middle, but a galaxy that's also what's known as a starburst galaxy. Sort of visible right there as a red dot, right in the middle of the right picture. With the galaxy itself being part of millions and actually billions of other galaxies in this image from NASA. And what's interesting about this image is, well, the fact that it's always been there. It's actually been studied very thoroughly for many, many years. But it wasn't really until recently that the scientists finally discovered this. All of this is part of a very well-known image taken by Hubble, known as the Goods North Field. As you can see, there are so many different galaxies here already, and so many are well-known. But obviously, some of them are kind of hiding in the plain sight. And some of them, like this tiny red dot you see right there, are just not really spectacular enough to notice right away until you study it further. Yet, this tiny dot turned out to be pretty important. So what exactly is this? This is an object the scientists refer to as GNZ7Q, the first ever rapidly growing black hole inside what seems to be a starburst galaxy. But more importantly, this missing link seems to be an exact match with a lot of predicted theories and a lot of computer simulations. A link that definitively explains to us how certain really massive black holes could have formed so early in the universe. Representing a kind of a precursor to a typical quasar, and representing a galaxy forming stars at a rate of about 1600 solar masses per year. Which is actually quite a lot, it's one of the most productive galaxies seen so far. Which is also why it appears so bright in the ultraviolet emissions, but interestingly, is extremely faint in the X-ray emissions. Which suggests that there is some kind of a black hole here, but a lot of the emissions from this black hole are actually hidden by the dusty core around the disk. And one of the main reasons why this galaxy was even found is because of these multi-wavelength observations. When the scientists were reanalyzing this image, they realized that there was this one spot in the middle that just didn't really add up. The emissions here were just a little bit different from a typical starburst galaxy and definitely different from a typical quasar. And with the current value of its redshift, it's estimated to be about 29 billion light years away from us. So sort of around that point in the early universe where we do expect a lot of these starburst galaxies to start transforming into quasars. And all of this, right now, theoretically at least, adds up perfectly. It's obviously not something the scientists expected to find in this image, but it nevertheless makes a lot of sense. As in, it provides evidence for the current theories of formation of different galaxies and massive black holes. No unusual explanations needed anymore because of the discovery of this beautiful galaxy that you see right there. 
And as the next step, the scientists are hoping to now use a similar technique on similar images, including of course this image, to try to find more of these unusual galaxies and to possibly clarify our ideas even more, determining how all of this transforms from one object to another and helping us understand how massive black holes grow. But I guess the most important part from the study is the fact that everything so far matches with various supercomputer simulations like the famous Illustris project you see right here. It looks like the galaxies and the universe as a whole does evolve sort of how we expect it to evolve based on the current theories. There might still be some mysteries and some disagreements here and there, but the more we look around and more examples we find around the universe, the more all of this makes sense. So definitely a pretty important discovery and a pretty important study. But once we learn more or once the scientists discover something else that doesn't make sense, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon, by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.